uh, we will be listening from Dr. Viju Ravichandran from MathWorks Bangalore. Uh, he will be giving you a detailed exposure on neural network toolbox of MATLAB. So, Dr. Ravichandran, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. We can all very well hear you. Okay. I think you can start now. You okay. can give your introduction uh, and then about something about MathWorks and MATLAB also and then uh, go on. Uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for the kind introduction. So, um, as ma'am mentioned, um, I'm Vijay Ravichandran, or you'll find me as Lakshmi Narayan Ravichandran um, on LinkedIn or on um, Google Scholar. So I uh, lead the Education Technical Evangelist team at MathWorks. Uh, what do we do as a team? Uh, we work with uh, educational institutes to ensure that uh, students and faculty are able to use MATLAB and Simulink and a host of our other products effectively for their teaching, research, projects, and many other things. Um, I work at MathWorks India. MathWorks is a company that develops MATLAB and Simulink. And uh, we've been uh, in the um, uh, India market for around uh, 10 years. And uh, MathWorks as a company has been around for 34 years. And uh, we are deeply rooted in education. And you know, um, a major part of our uh, you know, user base is based out of education. And uh, we are happy to uh, have this opportunity presented to us by NITTR to uh, talk to you about uh, MATLAB, um, the neural network toolbox workflow, and tomorrow a little bit on optimization. So um, uh, I was told that I have uh, time until uh, 4 p.m. Uh, this afternoon. So we'll be uh, going over a little bit of the neural network toolbox workflow in the initial part of the uh, uh, session. And uh, this will be followed by what has been a natural extension to neural networks uh, uh, you know, in the recent past, especially it's become a big buzzword. Uh, it's known as deep learning. Uh, a lot of you know what machine learning is. Uh, I'd like to show you what the difference between machine learning and deep learning is, and then how you can use MATLAB to do that. If time permits, I will show you a few examples. Otherwise, I'll show them tomorrow on the deep learning uh, workflow, and we can get started with the optimization. So, um, and I'd be happy to take questions in between or um, towards the end of the session. and. Uh, uh, you know, um, of course, uh, I, you have you've been uh, exposed exposed to this webcast session for a lot longer than I have. So there are a few etiquettes which I think uh, Ma'am would have briefed you about. So um, that sort of gives uh, you know uh, pro provides you with an introduction of me and what you can expect from the talk. Um, I just want a quick uh, you know I uh, I'll open my uh, Hangouts browser, but maybe if you can unmute your lines one by one and you know like how many of you have worked on matlab or how many of you worked on um, uh, simulink uh, maybe uh, can a couple of you tell me what you have done using matlab or simulink anyone 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 from the centers uh, here you speak you can uh, little bit, little bit uh, louder. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. Uh, my name is Shobit, uh, and uh, currently I'm working uh, uh, on the neural network for okay. uh, prediction. Okay. okay. So basically, about uh, I wanted to learn about uh, large networks. Okay. Sure. If uh, I'm not able to answer your question or if I don't touch upon those, because today we'll be going over a basic workflow, you yeah. can always get in touch with me offline and we'd be happy to talk to you more on that. My email address is on the slide over oh. here. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Sorry, that, from yeah. the centers? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think many of them are working. I have not explained them to uh, Simulink and uh, MATLAB as such, but I think I hope that they are, they know. Okay. MATLAB. Sure. Yeah, I will go over a, a brief, I'll do a brief uh, uh, intro to MATLAB if needed. Um, do you think that would be helpful, uh, participants? Uh, just say a yes or a no, a brief intro to MATLAB and all that? And because no need of it, you go to do no need. Okay, sure. I can go over that. Okay, sure. Good. Okay, that, that helps. Okay, sure. So, um, uh, the talk today, as I mentioned, uh, we wanted to introduce what is an artificial neural network. I know ma'am might have spoken to you about what it is, but uh, a little bit of a uh, background on what artificial neural networks is. What do we have as, uh, you know? No, you can continue. There is some, um, okay, continue. Yeah. 
uh, what is an artificial neural network and uh, what is there so in this block diagram if you notice there is an input and there is an output yeah and the output is tested against a target output and then you you provide some form of a feedback here the feedback is provided to what is known as a neural network which includes connections between neurons and these connections are called weights what are neurons essentially it's one of the simplest elements of uh, what is there as a cognitive system you can draw parallels to a control system which has feedback or you can also draw parallels to an adaptive or filter which also has feedback a lot of times what happens is we want to ensure that the output and the target are so close enough that by adjusting these weights the difference between them or the error there is minimized so that is essentially what an artificial neural network is so it's an input an output a neural network in here where we adjust the weights to be able to ensure that the target is uh, you know close enough to the output or output is close enough to the target yeah and um, the output is produced based on, on the input and the activation that is over there now what happens is in this block diagram i introduce neural networks as a block now what happens is the neuron model here is that you have multiple inputs to the neuron which take into account a lot of weights that is w1 to wr yeah and each input you know if you have r inputs each input is weighted with an appropriate uh, weight parameter okay and the sum of the weighted inputs and it's not only the sum but you also have a bias that is fed into the transfer function okay which is known as the f so you have here which is the sum summation each of the inputs with the weights and there is some bias here which is fed into what is known as a transfer function a lot of you might be uh, familiar with what is a transfer function from a signal processing perspective it's output over input of course in this case it's a non linear transfer function for the most part which is like a log sigmoid or a tan sigmoid or you may also end up having a pure linear transfer function the 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 choice of this transfer function is dependent on the user based on his application and every neuron uses any differentiable transfer function to be able to generate their output yeah so what do we have here the weights the bias and then the transfer function so we have r in r elements in the input vector now what happens here is we have a single layer architecture which consists of the following parts that is the input layer the weight connectors which are there in a criss cross yeah and then you have the summation followed by the bias okay and then you have the activation layer which is essentially the uh, transfer function and then finally the output okay so this essentially takes into account maybe what it might be for a log sig uh, function and things like that so this is with respect to each of these inputs coming in separately yeah but matlab is a vector uh, uh you know a, a lot of the inputs can be vectorized you don't need to end up writing for loops for each of the vectors you don't uh, it's it matlab stands for matrix laboratory so a lot of you know that matrix multiplication is simple so what we can do is we can combine all the r's that is the input to one particular vector which is also there as p so you have r by 1 which is a p and then w is essentially the weight weight matrix which is say s by r and you have the bias here which is essentially b1 to bs which is also there as a vector which is of course a column vector this is also a column vector and then when you sum it you end up getting what the output is and that can be done uh, uh, passed through a transfer function dr so, ravi can you little bit zoom it so that uh, it is little bit visible okay uh, let me try Ah yes yes is, yes is this better? Oh. Yes, yeah, better. Sure. So what we would uh sorry I think um this one. Ah uh -huh. yeah. uh, you are here. Yeah. So what we'd like to do ideally is to ensure that we set up the problem in such a way that it's all seen as a vector. So you have r which is an input vector which is sorry p which is an input vector of size r the weights which are of size s by r the bias which are of size s by 1 which is a column vector and the output becomes s by 1 and which is passed through a 
transfer function and you get this as well. So this is essentially what the overall uh, way you will pass it in MATLAB to the, uh, uh, you know, in, in terms of vectors. Yeah, because you don't want to take each of these inputs. Now, this is a single layer architecture. What happens within a few layers? You know, if you want to uh, configure factors within a network, you can say, I have an input layer, I have a hidden layer. So you will essentially say a few things in terms of what the matrices are. We'll come to that. This is IW11, which is an identity matrix. So you'll essentially have diagonal weights and then you have the bias uh, that is there here. Similarly, what the output layer is. So you have this as well. And um, what this will give you, what this input, ha what this network has is it has an input layer with two inputs. It has a hidden layer with four neurons. That is four weights and four biases, which is why you see a four by two and a four by one. And the activation here is a tan sig layer. Yeah. And it's one line of command here, which takes into account W, the P that is the input and the B that's the bias. And you just pass it through that. That's my A1. And then the output layer has three neurons, which means it has three weights and then has three biases and I get the output as a three vector and the activation is a pure linear layer. Yeah. So this is how you can configure what the input is going to be in this case, one vector, what the hidden layer is, which has four neurons and what the output layer is, which has three neurons. This is how you end up config configuring the two layers that is A1 and A2 in the form of two particular lines of code. Yeah. Okay. Now, I want to draw your attention to what is there in the documentation in the form of other network architectures. Yeah. So uh, uh, we have a very, very um, uh, uh, powerful documentation, very well documented set of features within MATLAB. And I'd like to show you what we have here. Okay. Of course I am in India. So you can access it from the web or you can also access it from, uh, you know, uh, from within MATLAB. So in this case, I'm just defining the shallow neural network architectures. So it actually shows what is a historical and alternative. So you have the adaptive neural network, you have the radial basis neural network, perceptron, if you want linear, hop field, probabilistic, any of those. Let's go into the radial basis neural network. It shows you uh, the same thing that I had over here, what the neuron model is. It says what the transfer function for the radial basis function is. How does the plot occur? The rad bas transfer function. I can zoom in a little more. And mm -hmm. then, um, you know, it says what is a neural network architecture? You know, it says I have the input layer, which is, of course, the same. The radial basis here is of one particular uh, length. And the only change I have here is I use the function called rad bas and the linear layer, which is essentially uh, the second layer here, which is the output layer over here. And it gives me enough information on how do I set it up? So the output of the first layer can be obtained by the following code. What do I have here? So essentially I'm going to say rad bas. Yeah. And I'm essentially going to say, take the, uh, take the distance and I'll, I'll be sending you this uh, information, but it's just this one particular line of code, which takes into account one, the bias, then two, the input and what the value here is, and then overall take the net, uh, uh, you know, form the network and then use the radial basis function. Yeah. So in some way, you don't need to end up writing these types of lines of code. It's much easier uh, in some time. You will see how much easier it is to use the built in functions or apps that we have. But what I wanted to show you is if you want to understand how uh, uh, each of these is done, you only need to end up writing net equals new radial basis mm. E over here, mm. P and I have the target vectors that are T P is the input vector is the target vector and spread is the spread constant, uh, which is uh, for the radial basis layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it creates many uh, uh, neurons and, you know, it, it ends up showing a lot of things that are seen here as the output. But what I would like to just emphasize here is it's one or two lines of code that you need to use. You don't need to end up writing a lot of code. And this is why we end up positioning what is known as a neural network toolbox 
for neural networks of course you can write your own functionalities but once you or the students have understood what um, um, you know uh, the concept behind neural networks is it's easier for you to use the built-in functions mm -hmm. of course when you teach them initially when you teach students or when you're trying out do not use the functions because i believe that if someone just uses the functionality and does not understand the background behind the functionality there is no point and mm -hmm. most of us are educators here who would like to ensure that the student understands the concept mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. that that is uh, the thing so so we'll be looking at the radial basis on neural networks over here so the radial basis function essentially what we do is uh, it has a radial basis neuron. The transfer function here is rad bas of n, which is represented this way, which is the radial basis function. It has a maximum one when the input is zero. And when the distance between w and p reduces, the output increases. Okay. And there's more information on what the radial basis neuron does as a detector and what the bias does with respect to the sensitivity and all that. And I'll be passing on these slides to you as all uh, you know after the session mm -hmm. so this is something that's there in the theory of the radial basis neural network yeah now what i want to show you is a couple of examples as ma'am uh, requested mm -hmm. on how you can use the neural network toolbox the built-in apps and all of that stuff but before that i want to go over the workflow so I'll come back to this in just a little bit, this example for a time series or, or, or time delay neural network. But I want to point out the workflow for using neural networks. Can someone tell me what would be the first step in using a neural network or first step in any mathematics problem? Awesome. I'm, I'm so happy that you said because I'm so happy that you didn't tell it was the algorithm. It's typically what we need to collect as data. That is the most important thing. The next step is to create the network. Yeah. And we'll take into account a lot of criteria when we need to create the network. Next, what we do is we need to configure the network. You know, we'll need to say which is the algorithm that would go in behind. In creating the network, you would say how many layers you need. But in configuring, you might need to say what is the minimization thing that you need to do or what algorithm you might need to use. And then you initialize the weights and the biases because it's not going to work right away in the first instance yeah and then you end up training the network can someone tell me what this training process means yeah changing the weights why would you do that when we go with the supervisor kind of output and we try to you know make a model which which uh, will be able to you know produce uh, for the next uh, you know and minimize the error between the okay any other answer overall why would you need to perform any form of training on a data set True. so that the network should behave yes yeah. <laughs> or the algorithm behaves the way you want it to you give it sample data and you say that this is me this is a ground truth ensure that you adjust the weights in such a way that if you end up finding similar data ensure that you classify it properly that's in the classification scenario right the same thing over here as well we want to ensure that the network is trained because we want the target and the output to match as much as possible mm -hmm. So that will be the training process. Mm -hmm. Following that, you will validate the network. What, what do you mean by validating the network? You would have set the weights. You might be giving new data. Yeah, the old data was used to train, but you might be giving new data to validate the network and then see what the error coefficient maybe is. And then finally, you use the network. Is this clear to every one of you? Like any questions on this front? This is the classic statistics workflow. You know, it need not be just neural networks. It can be for any classification algorithm, except that in that case, it may not be a network. It will be the choice of an algorithm, choice of the parameters, and then training the classifier and validating it. So any questions at this point of time on this workflow? OK, I will assume that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the answer is no. I have a few screenshots on what will be the process, but I will also be walking you through each of them. Uh, uh, neural network uh, classifiers that are over there. So before that, I want to say, how do you collect data? So 
The key thing which is very nice about MATLAB is that you're able to access data into MATLAB in many ways. It need not be just a mat file. It can be from an Excel sheet. It could be text. It could be binary. It could be audio, video files, images. A lot of times now there are images that need to be classified or images that need to be trained. So deep learning is very, very, uh, you know, um, useful in computer vision problems. We'll take a look at that in just a little bit. You also can read from scientific formats like uh, extended markup language. You can read data from multiple databases or from other languages. Or if you have measurement hardware, like say, um, you know, if you need to acquire data serially or, you know, um, you store it and afterwards you take it in, you can do it using what is known as the data acquisition toolbox or the instrument control toolbox. Yeah. Now, so MATLAB as such, as I mentioned, there is something known as apps which are over there. I'll just show you a bunch of screenshots and then we will walk through the uh, whole process right away. So you need to, you, you have an app, which I'll also show you in MATLAB. You have an app which does the uh, neural network start. You can choose what sort of a uh, thing that, what, what sort of an application you need to perform in uh, with respect to neural networks. Next, you end up getting, say, if you're looking at the fitting tool, you may get a screenshot like this, and it says, you know, what are, what is the, what, what, why you need this, and what is the neural network going to look like, and then you can select data, and uh, I'll show you in 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 the next few minutes on how you can load data. I might use a example data set. And after which I can select, you know, I can partition the data for training and validation. If you realize we mentioned that we might need to train a little bit and then validate it and then test it. So we split it up in such a way that a lot of data is used for training and some is used for validation and some is used for testing. Yeah. And then you can define the basic network architecture. We'll come to that and then choose a training algorithm. I'll come to uh, that also in just a little bit. You can you have help documentation in every component at this point of time. And there are multiple training algorithms that are over there, starting from a basic gradient descent to say uh, the Levenberg Markart model, or you can define your own training algorithms as well. So you have support from existing algorithms and also, um, uh, you know, from um, your own user defined uh, training algorithms. The overall learning workflow, which I want to point out is you iterate till you find the best model. That is, you have your data, you pre-process the data in whatever way you want, you may be able to perform supervised learning class of classification regression and get the model. This is an iterative process, okay? In the prediction, what you end up doing is you have the new data, you take that pre-process thing and you take that particular model and are able to predict it. So the training step is very, very important in this case. Okay, and of course you have the option of evaluating the network. We will come to that in some time. And then finally be able to generate MATLAB code or Simulink model automatically. Okay, so um, I want to I want to go back to the same. Uh, I want to go back to that uh, set of things where we said what each of the things is. So we will collect the data, create the network, configure the network, initialize the weights and biases, train it, validate it, and use the network. Yeah. Okay. Let's switch to MATLAB for the next 10 to 15 minutes. I'm going to be using MATLAB, uh, 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 you know, uh, just so that you're able to uh, uh, see what is being done. I'm not a very big fan of only using PowerPoint slides, so I prefer using uh, uh, moving here. Okay. How many of you are familiar with this setup of MATLAB? Can I have a, you know, a show of, how, or rather, can people tell me what the version of MATLAB people are using? What are you using? 17, 17. 17, we here we are using. In our institute also, we are using 14. Okay. And uh, any other answer? Any other centers? Okay. Maybe 13, 14 only. Yeah. Okay, sure. So um, every year, uh, there are two releases in MATLAB. So one of the releases is called uh, 2017A and the other release is called 2017B. This year, in in another two weeks, there'll be a release called, uh, or in a week, there'll be a release called R2018A. And in September, you will have a release called R2018B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are updates to the functionalities and features, uh, especially the neural network toolbox had a huge, uh, you know, change 
in 17a and 17b because neural network again got a lot of attention because of deep learning because mm -hmm. neural network was almost branded as a dead area like in you know the early 2000s but in the last four to five years there's been a lot of you know um um interest back in neural networks we'll see why that is that's because of deep learning and we'll see what the reason for that is when i switch to the deep learning uh, 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 deep learning topic but what but the reason i asked you is in in 2012b that was around 5 years back we introduced this tabs here yeah. and one of the tabs here is called as the apps okay and um, if you're not able to see it, let me try to uh, change my display setting to ensure that uh, people are you you are able to see. Um, I'd like to ensure that all of you are able to um, see it. Is this better? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So you see something known as apps, mm -hmm. and in this apps, if you notice, I have marked a few favorites here, which has curve fitting, distribution fitter, optimization. I created my own app, which is called, uh, you know, MEC app. I'll show you what that is. I can show you how to create an app later. In the math stats and optimization, you have like multiple apps, which is neural network clustering or neural network fitting, neural network pattern recognition or ne neural network time series. Yeah, but let's not do that. And let's start with something else that I have. The way I do is I just type neural network start. Yeah. N N start. Can anyone tell me what I might get here? Okay. Has anyone used this? You have used it? Yes, sir. Okay, sure. Now in this uh, in this you can see what the you know um, more information is, you can see what the examples are or what the data sets are. Let's go and take a look at what these okay. This seems to not work with in terms of clicking. Okay, okay, it opened. So if you notice it, it showed, you know, there's a lot of data sets that's already there. There's some body fat or data set or chemical data set. Let's look at what this body fat data set is. It's, you know, it's body fat percentage data set. So essentially it loads, uh, you know, around, um, it loads two variables, which is essentially for 252 people, 13 parameters, that is their age, weight, height, and multiple things about their body. Yeah. And then, um, Essentially, I have the target, which is essentially going to be estimated from the input what uh, the body fat target is. It has, here I have all the circumference, height, weight, and everything, and I need to get what, what the body fat target is. So I can I can get what data sets I want or what the examples are and things like that. Okay. Now, shall we take maybe an example of the fitting app initially? So you can type NFT tool if you want, or I can just click on that. Okay. Who can tell me? Okay, let me try to, um, sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean to do that. Um, okay. Mm, okay. It's unfortunately, I'm not able to see a few of the buttons that I need to see. Um, I'm unfortunately going to have to reset my uh, display thing to a little lesser because it doesn't seem to show. But if in, if in case you're not able to see, please do um, let me know. Um, okay, you're able to see it still? Yeah, okay. So if you notice here. And in between it, zoom it sometimes. So yeah, yeah, I can, I, I'll definitely zoom it. Yeah. Okay, so, so if you notice over here, it says, of course, welcome to the neural network thing. It will say examples. So this is the neural network. So all I need to say is next, yeah, and you can get the data from workspace. Of course, I don't have any data which is in the workspace, okay, and what the target is. So I'll say load example data set. We said we'll look at the body fat example. So we are essentially getting a, three, a 13 by 252 matrix, which essentially takes into account all of these for 252 people and what the targets, which is to be estimated from the input. So I'll import it. Okay, and if you notice in terms of input, it's essentially body fat input that I would check. And in terms of output, I'd say body fat target. I can either say the samples are rows or columns. So let's take a look. So what is it here in this case? Row. Row. Yeah, so essentially we'll end up saying that it's, it's there as uh, you know, because it's a particular row, we'll say that each of the column has uh, has the data for one particular person. 
Yeah. So it says 252 samples of 13 element and 252 samples of one element. We essentially want it for one element. If we say the other way around, it will say 13 samples of 252 elements, which is wrong. So we wanted the matrix columns way. Okay. Next, I will go to next. Okay. Now, can someone tell me what is happening in this setup here? So I have the thing where I need to choose some for training, choose some for validation, choose some for testing. Can someone tell me what's going to happen there? May I have a question here. What is yes. the validation and testing? Why don't you tell me what's the validation <laughs> and what is the testing? So I was validation is actually the testing. Now we give a data where we require, we do not know what the answer is. Okay. So we so, get target okay. not given. Ma'am, are you able to read this uh, statement here? What is there below validation? They have no effect on training and so provide an independent measure of network performance during and after training. That is testing. Can you read what is uh, at validation? To measure network generalization and to halt training when generalization stops improving. Okay. So when, so even though the training is done, the validation will ensure that if uh, there is uh, network generalization, if it's not improving, it will stop it over there. Okay, so validation is to ensure that your trained training process because training is going to take a very long time, correct? And we want to ensure that the training is in a mode where the input, uh, sorry, the output and the target are matching. If they don't match, we will not be going. So the validation is essentially where we test uh, the output against the ground truth to say that, hey, yes, it's working fine. Go ahead and train more data. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now. I can go and change it to say validation as 5% and I'll say I need 25% of testing. The default is essentially 70, 15, 15. Let's go with this, but we'll change it in some time. Okay. We'll maybe reduce the training thing and we'll, we'll see what the effect is. So mm -hmm. any questions at this point of time? Okay. okay. Next, I'll go to next and I'll say, uh, you know, define the fitting network, I will say what is the number of hidden neurons. Okay, so if you if you recall, in my um, sorry, not here. In my thing, I should be able to say how many neurons do I have? Or in this case, I should be able to say in this hidden layer what it is going to be what that n is going to be. Uh, are you okay with 10? Or do you want to change the number or we'll come back and take a look at what the what it might uh, how it might affect? We'll do that afterwards. Let it be 10 at this time. Yes. Okay. Now, what I do is it, it also says recommendation return to this panel and change the number of neurons if the network does not perform well after training. So mm -hmm. it's obvious. Now I go next and I can choose a training algorithm. There are three of them that I can choose for this particular example. But as I mentioned, there are many, many of those that can be used, which is shown in this particular slide. So if you notice, I can choose many, many of those algorithms in this training component. Okay. Now, let me choose the default one. And what I'll do is I will say train. Okay. So this Levenberg Markart algorithm says it requires more memory, but less time. And the training automatically stop, stops when the generalization stops improving. Okay. Or if I want to say Bayesian regularization, it will say it requires more time, but can result in good generalization for small or no noisy data sets. It, it essentially shows what it is. And it also says you can train multiple times, but the, it will end up generating different re results due to different initial conditions and sampling. Okay. Now let's train it. And what I got immediately was a network that was trained like this. How many inputs do I have here? 13. And what is the number of hidden layers? 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, the output is 1. How many iterations do you see over here? It says around six, 16 iterations. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm able to see how many validations did it perform? Six of them. And all six of them are correct. So there the generalization actually reduced. Yeah, so I can go here and check what the mean square error is or the R value is. It's it's in some format. It's say 0 0.82 or 0 0.88 for the training, uh, 0 0.86 for the validation and 0 0.82 for the uh, testing. And here the mean square error is also there in some format. Now let's say let's plot the fit. Okay, this has 
more than one element so it doesn't okay plot the error histogram okay so can you tell me how should the error histogram look what is the, what is error essentially should it be a target minus output is that correct and that error should be close to zero Cl more the number of values closer to zero this yellow thing is zero more the number of values closer to zero it means it's a better fit this should ideally be tapered down over here okay so of course there are values here but there are things with more errors yeah and if you notice the train it was a training thing but with respect to the test of course we had a few values here but there are errors that are occurring with a little bit of higher magnitude of error as well okay now you can also plot the regression value which will essentially end up showing you what it is you know with respect to the uh, uh, this is the fit this is the data so if it lies on the other side it's correct if it lies on this side it's not correct so you have those sort of parameters that we need to take a look at so you have all of these plots let's go back and change a few things what would you like to change here number of neurons so shall we change it to maybe 16 or or maybe let's change it to 32 we'll see how that is and then let's go to next and let's train okay now how many iterations did it take right now 12, 12. as opposed to how much did it take previously 16. 16 and is the error here um uh you know the r value closer to one is better yeah and let's plot the error histogram is it much better yeah closer to zero do you see more values yeah and there are not too many with too many errors so this should essentially be where we need to have a lot of values yeah now let's maybe take a different regular maybe bayesian regularization algorithm and let's retrain and we did say that it takes a lot of memory and hence it also is time but there may be more accuracy so the bayesian thing essentially says requires more time but can result in good generalization for difficult small or noisy data sets and the training stops according to the adaptive weight minimization so it still is doing a lot of iterations it still is trying to see what um, it is uh, uh, what the parameters changing and if you notice the mu value is changing uh, between 0 0.005 to 1 mm -hmm. so it does take considerable amount of time yeah but it can result in a good generalization so you are also able to track how much time it is taking say if in case you want to report your findings in a research paper you can say on MATLAB R 2017B on an 8 GB uh, hard drive or uh, the 8 GB RAM, this is how much it takes. So how many iterations did it take here? 741. But let's let's take a look at what the value, what the error value, R value here is 0.89. And we do have the training MSEs. Let's take a look at the error histogram. Yeah. So you do see that there is a um, there is more error uh, that is spread out but it is still contained within plus 10 and minus 10 mm -hmm. yeah so it's it, it depends on what your parameters are and how many do how many on uh, new neurons do you have and things like that so it's up to the data that you have which you will need to select how much you want to be doing uh, training on how much do you want to be doing validation and how much you want to be doing testing on now i want to show the effect of maybe reducing the training data set and let's increase the validation and testing some how much how many samples am i using here for training 45 percent as opposed to 70 percent how much am i using it for validation 25 and around a 30 let's go and check what happens here and it's going to be around 10 hidden neurons and then i'm going to use the same levenberg markart algorithm now let's check what happens did i have too many iterations for the thing for the training mm -hmm. no it was 13 why because my training data is lesser is mm -hmm. that right yeah mm -hmm. and now let's see the error histogram is it more significant is the error more significant compared to what it was earlier yeah, because the training data is lesser. So unless your training data ends up having the best possible or all cases, it may not end up giving you the best performance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's go back and change it to a point where 
we'll reduce the validation to say 10%. This is now increased to 60%. Let's go and check what happens again. Yeah, I'll train it. And when I plot the error histogram, it's definitely improved with the minimum error, you know, lying between minus nine to 11. In the previous case, it went on to 40 and a few other things. Even though it looks spread out, we are doing it in terms of bins, if you've realized. Yeah, so this is essentially how you can perform the overall training of a network and then also end up validating it and then finally uh, trying to see how the classification works. Now, when you go next over here, you can evaluate the network. OK, you can perform additional tests if you want on data or you can adjust the network size or you can import a la larger data set or you can say train again and few other things. This is optional. After that, you can get an application deploy solution. What is the first thing here? What does it say here? MATLAB function. So it will essentially end up creating what is a built in MATLAB function. So it essentially says it's my neural network function where X is my input. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm not giving any outputs. And what are the out, sorry, uh, any other additional input? What are my outputs? I end up having, uh, you know, um, my Y, which is the uh, uh, essentially what the output value over TS time steps is. I ended up getting what my gains and the offsets are. That is a bias and the offsets. What is the number of layers? What is a bias in each of the layers? If you notice, that is layer one and layer two. And then what are the I and L values? And then what my um, output layer is? And how do I simulate it? The, all of this function was automatically uh, gen all of this function was all automatically generated. Is that helpful when you understand the neural network workflow, you know MATLAB, all you need to do is ensure that you're able to train the parameters, you know, train the parameters well. So it says it uses the sigmoid transfer function. Um, so there are multiple things over here. So these are the module functions which are there. So this code is automatically generated by the neural network toolbox. Now, the second thing is, if you want to deploy, you know, uh, it into say an executable. Yeah, if you want to or generate a C code, yeah, you can just get a mat matrix only function because the previous one actually had a cell array. So here, what you can do is you can get an executable using MATLAB compiler. Yeah, it will give you an exe. But if you want a C code, you can just get a matrix only function. The next thing I wanted to show you was what does the Simulink equivalent model of this look like? So for the first time, it takes a little while for Simulink to open up because it's generating the model and Simulink is a pretty heavy platform with a lot of toolboxes and you know the blocks are corresponding to each of those toolboxes. And what do I see here? I have an input X, I have my output Y, and I have the function fitting. Mm -hmm. I can uh, I can double click on it and say it's a mask, it's a function fitting, but I can go in, I can say right click. Um, that's not, allow okay, it does. Okay, My computer is a little slow, I uh, apologize. I can go and say mask and I can say look under mask. It has two layers, okay? And uh, one of them is the input layer, which is going in here, which is the first layer and the second layer, which is the uh, which is which is uh, so we have a two layer network and the output layer. Let's take a look at what the layer one looks like. We'll do mask and look under mask again. So I have the delays. I have my initial weights and the bias and I have the uh, uh, transfer function. Let me go look at what this is a tan sig function. Let me go under mask and say look under mask it essentially shows me what the overall thing is. You know, it says minus two e power u plus one and then reciprocal of that plus two and all that. Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Let's look at what's under the weights. It, we go to mask and we say, look under mask. If you notice, it essentially has a weights function or a weights block for each of them. I can look under each of them and actually I cannot because it's 
something that will show me what the constant value is. So this essentially takes into account what the weight here is for each of them, you know, like mm. the, the 10 particular weights that are there and for each of the layers. So this is for one of the layers, one of the weights. Okay. Mm. And the overall function fitting here, the layer two here will end up having 10 more of those. So let's take a look that, at that. And I look under mask, I have the same. And here it's a second weight. And I, and I look under mask, I have a similar thing where there's a set of weights, the uh, input here, and then what the overall output is going to be. This particularly, I like Simulink in this case because it gives a very visual representation one, because a lot of times, uh, if you notice, when I started out my presentation itself, I started out with this sort of a block diagram, if you realize, or, you know, with this type of a block diagram. And what you get in Simulink is pretty close to what you have as a neural network in literature. So it's very helpful to be able to see what pictorially it represents. Students are able to learn better. You're able to explain it better to, in your research publications. And more importantly, you can have streaming data coming in you know, using your data acquisition devices and you can set the time to say infinity. And as the data comes in, you would be able to, you know, uh, provide the output and <clears throat> it can function in real time. Okay. And um, you can also just get a basic graphical diagram of the neural network, which is a general thing. You know, if you want to just put it in your publications, you can just end up uh, saying, this is what I have my function look like. Okay, it didn't expand, but this is what my overall neural network looks like yeah okay i'm sorry how did you go to this display solution uh i just clicked on neural network diagram okay and um, you get this okay. yeah so all of this is contained within that new neural network nn start okay i'll go over it again for another example but at this time is the workflow clear yes yeah okay I'm going to go next and, uh, you know, it says, do you want to save a result? Uh, you know, save it to the workspace and all that stuff. You can do any of those at this point of time. I'm just going to close it. I'm not going to bother saving it. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do or explore is next uh, or what we would like to do is next. Maybe look at what it is for a time series, dynamic time series. Yeah. So. What is a time series here? Can you can you tell me what uh, can you tell me where time series analysis is important? Any answers? I can get two answers here. Yeah. Anyone? What's a time? Why is a time series analysis important? Because time series is a pretty uh, important term in uh, these days. So any um, any response? Why would you need to perform time series analysis? Some sort of a prediction. Some sort of a prediction. Can you give me an application Hello. now? Hello. Hello. Stock exchange. What's that? Stock exchange. Stock exchange. Great. So uh, that is one. Reverse one. Growth and reverse growth and yeah, definitely. So the thing is, uh, say for instance, uh, if I can, uh, if I want to see. Um, you know, over the year, I've seen what uh, data I have, you know, maybe uh, say one of the airlines wants to take into account what the delay was with respect to a particular aircraft, um, you know, uh, over the over the over the years and say in November, Delhi has fog or Delhi has, uh, you know, fog in January also that contributes to a delay in Bangalore because the com incoming aircraft is from Delhi. Can we route it elsewhere? So they're able to predict it by ensuring that they learn the model initially. Yeah. So as it is mentioned here, prediction is a kind of dynamic filtering in which past values are used to predict the future values. Okay. And dynamic neural networks include either a tabbed delay line for nonlinear filtering application. So you can provide a feedback or it could just be a thing based on what the past values are. Okay. So let's take a nonlinear input output. You do have a nonlinear autoregressive with some extra external input or nonlinear autoregressive with no external input. Let's just take into account nonlinear input output. 
Um, these predictive models are used in, say, um, you know, uh, uh, this predictive maintenance of, you know, systems like, say, a jet propulsion engine may not know, you may not know when it is going to uh, go bad. So if you're able to collect the data and say, at this time, we should perform a maintenance check, there can definitely be a lot more uh, savings involved rather than going and checking every time. Yeah. So in a lot of chemical processes, robotics or aerospace systems, manufacturing systems, it is used now. Nonlinear input output time series analysis. OK, I will load an example data set again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take into account maybe um, pollution mortality. OK, so what I have here is I have the pollution input. So which essentially says what is the temperature relative humidity? Um, a few of the uh, harmful uh, uh, th harmful gases ozone and the particulate matter okay and then i have the pollution target which will essentially say what is the total mortality respiratory mortality that is how many people may end up getting respiratory disorders how many people end up getting cardiovascular disorders is this a good data set is that okay with you guys okay oh. and i have 508 cell arrays with eight by one vectors for each of them so my data has 500 data points or 500 time steps so i'll import it so I have the pollution input and I have the pollution target. OK, now, as I said, it's a 508 uh, time steps of eight elements. It's gathered over 508 time steps. Now let's go next. OK, I'll use the same thing. I'll use around um, what do you call um, you and you in, interestingly in this case, what has happened is you end up having what is 508 times three? It's going to be 1524. Yeah, you need to end up getting 1524 target time steps. So essentially end up taking around 70% um, for training and remaining for validation and testing as always. And let's go next. And here, what you can also in terms of a time delay, why do you need this time delay is you need to ensure that how many time steps can the network respond to? How much do you want to go back in time? Yeah. And the number of hidden neurons is 10. We will change this parameter. You know, how, how is the output? How many times is the output a function of the input and things like that? You'd be able to say that that's the delay. If you want uh, y of t only to be t minus one and t minus two, this will be two. If you want it to take into account many more, uh, like it's almost like an FIR filter or an IAR filter with how many uh, previous samples do you want? Okay. Any questions so far? So if you increase the delays, what will happen? The increase the delay, you will end up having more more delays and you'll end up getting more data to make a decision. Yeah, because if you notice your uh, your Y will be a function of more data points. Okay. Different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now let me change it back to two at this point of time and then say I'll say next. And I'll use the same uh, model and let's perform the training. It again took around uh, 16 iterations. There was some gradient. There was some validation check. Yeah. And let's plot the error histogram. And of course, you know, you see that there is a lot of concentration around zero, which means the data is correct and we're getting lesser error. Yeah. And yellow bar there indicates a zero error. Let's plot the response. Yeah. So if you notice here, it's a time series thing. So my error is the yellow one, okay? And uh, I have the training target represented in blue and the training output represented in a blue plus the validation and uh, this one. So the overall thing here, the black one is the response. And when you look closely, let me try to zoom in. Okay, so. If you notice here, I do have the response, which is in this way, and it essentially connects what my training output is. And in a few cases, you see that the error is lesser. In a few cases, you see that the error is more. And that's because we need to be checked what the validation target or the test target were. So it was mixed up in, in a lot of these cases. But overall, if you notice the target minus output, most of the error is less than 20 here. And which means the classification is pretty decent. Now we can also say plot the error autocorrelation. So closer the error autocorrelation is to this, it means that it's a better uh, 
uh, it, it, of course, this has to be the maximum value. In this case, if you notice the confidence limit, if it's around, uh, say, 8%, it's around 8% in this case, or uh, around 8. And this is with respect to lag, depending on how, how much delay you end up having. Okay. Now, let's go back and change the number of delays. So let's change it to maybe 4. Okay. And let's say next. And I'll use the same thing. And if you notice over here, around 11 iterations were sufficient. There were six validation checks. Let's plot the error histogram. And if you notice here, it's a lot better now. You know, I have around 500 data points in the, you know, close to zero bin and around 400 data points, you know, with, again, you know, less than minus three or less than minus four. Yeah. And here it's almost zero here. And let's say the error autocorrelation it's a lot better you know as the value changes it's a lot better and i don't have too much of an error over here okay so um same thing i can go next i can adjust the network size i can import a larger data set if i want i don't want to do any of those i can say i want a simulating diagram or i want a neural network diagram it essentially showed i have a delay element the weight and the bias this is the hidden and this is the output layer okay or i can generate a matlab function if i want to. yeah okay so um, this is one of the things that we wanted to show you. Ma'am wanted uh, okay. you know, us to go Excuse over. Me, sir? Yes. Yes. Uh, can I ask a question, please? Please, yes. Uh, sir, uh, you just told about the time series yes. uh, functioning. Uh, how can we make the prediction through the toolbox? Could you just explain that? Prediction of? Prediction in the time series app. How mm -hmm. can we make that? Actually, the time series toolbox has made it its own output on the basis of the input and the target. Yes. yes. That's if I want to get the further data, mm -hmm. then how will I move for that? Okay. Let me let, let me uh, take a look at that. I'll, I'll take the same example. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I'll go next. I'll do the same thing and I will end up uh, doing that. I'll train and uh, I'll go next. Now, you can say, you know, you want to perform additional tests or you want to take a look at additional data. You can load that in here as an input and then say you want the output to be stored here and you can either perform the testing of the network or you can perform the classification right here itself. Okay. Or the other thing is if you want to predict the better way would be to create a MATLAB function this way and give the input here for the prediction and you'll end up getting the output here. Does it make sense? Is it okay? So essentially, use the N, use the NN tool to generate your network and then either take a Simulink model or a MATLAB model and provide the input here and get the predicted value there. Okay. Uh, where in the Simulink diagram? Where in the Simulink diagram? So I can go to Simulink here and it will end up creating. So here, instead of the constant, you can end up giving your input. Okay. Instead okay. of the constant, we can give the input. Yeah. So essentially, you can go and say um, edit mask. In this case, it was different inputs and all that over here. But you can end up giving your input over here. Okay. Or better, in in uh, do it using the MATLAB function where you can give your input as x. Okay. Okay. Um, but what if like I have got 120 points and I want to get the 121st point? Then how will I get onto it? Okay. Because how I don't have the other values, no. I want to get the further of it. For example, I want to predict the temperature for the next five days okay. on the basis of the past hundred days. So how okay. will I be able to enter that five days? I'm not able to get into that. Okay. So you essentially <laughs> want to be able to predict the future data. Yeah. Is that, is that correct? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sure. So in that case, what you can end up doing is um, just a minute. It, it, there is a, there's a place in this one. Okay. In that case, you can end up saying uh, you you do have the x. Okay. Put the la put the last u as zero at this point of time. Okay. And then see what you get. It should work that way. Otherwise, uh, you can also use uh, the fitting app where you might have uh, you might you might have generated a neural network for this, and okay. then you you can uh, put that in as an input and uh, take it uh, to to perform the prediction. Okay. I will, I, will, I, will, I will send you I will send you the workflow on this when I send you the email. Okay. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Sure.
Um, similarly, you have the same uh, functionality for the pattern recognition app and for the clustering app. So I'm happy to either go over this or I'm happy to move on to deep learning for computer vision problems and take a couple of applications there, whatever works for you, ma'am. Uh, uh, yes, deep learning. But now I think it is a similar, na? like pattern it's recognition and clustering is similar only. Na? Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a similar app, ma'am. So, and we can we can send we can send them how to uh, get uh, the uh, how to you know uh, maybe a couple of examples which are there we can send them that example links okay sure okay now um, also ma'am will we be able to get the email addresses of the participants to be able to send um, the thing I'll I'll talk to you about that but we would like to send them the information I have the email ID of all the coordinators uh, of the centers who are connected so I can okay. give that to you. Awesome. That you can okay. send it to them and then we will send it. They will send it on their own. Sure. Definitely. Sure. Thank you, ma'am. Now, um, the thing is, the next thing I would like to talk about is uh, uh, deep learning for computer vision applications using MATLAB. Uh, for the next uh, 40 minutes, I'll go over basics of deep learning and why did it gain uh, importance at, and maybe two examples. And I will go over the third example tomorrow when we are talking about the next part. Okay. So um, the agenda for this talk is going to be what is deep learning, why deep learning, and we'll go over a few things based on how much short time we have. OK, can someone tell me what deep learning is? Someone from the audience, someone from one of the centers? Mm. Anyone from the centers? What did you say? Increasing the number of hidden layers. OK. okay. Good. So essentially, learning is about automation. And you know we want to ensure that we don't instruct the computers on what to do, but instead they should learn on, on their own. That is enabling them to get some artificial intelligence. So deep learning is based on the neural network architecture. That is the computer system architecture of human brain and the nervous system. The term deep refers to the number of layers, that is neurons and rows in the network. More the number of layers, deeper the network. At this point of time, if you notice, there was one hidden layer and one output layer. But if there are more layers, it's the deeper the network. Okay, And deep learning is a type of uh, uh, learning in which a model or a computer or any of those networks learns to perform classification di tasks directly from images, text, or sound. Yeah, so a lot of you might have noticed, yeah, when uh, you're able to uh, put your photos on Google Photos or Facebook or uh, iPhotos, it can say, uh, it will detect the face, not only that, but will it will say, is this this person? Is it this person? Yeah, how did it do that? It's It has learned and now it is trying to validate, yeah, on what it is and it will say yes. In a lot of cases, it does it automatically and then, you know, you can give it feedback that it is correct or not. What are a few of the applications? So um, there's going to be a video playing here. If it doesn't uh, help, it, if it doesn't play really well, do not bother. I can, I will be uh, showing it to you, or I can send a link to you. So on the left hand side, I have a green part, and I also have a blue component. And the green component there keeps changing, and you know it's sort of labeling something as blue component and then it's uh, showing uh, some it's trying to see something else in terms of what is happening uh, in the picture can someone tell me what's happening here did the video play fine mm -hmm. no no it's okay yeah okay so essentially what's happened is it tried to detect the blue objects as objects that are moving okay mm -hmm. green as the navigatable path it's an autonomous driving system so it's trying to perform segmentation but it is using a bit of semantics or a little bit of intelligence in trying to make a decision because it knows that the blue vehicle is moving yeah or it will move sometime it also notices that the road uh, is which it has you know for moment is quite big and in a few cases it's also misclassifying it I'd like to do this second example where it's trying to detect, you know, a vehicle with a confidence of one saying it is a vehicle. In a few cases here, if you notice, it detected something else as a vehicle, but it's not. But in most cases, it's able to detect a vehicle when it is trying to change lanes such that it does not collide. Okay, so 
how did this happen this is essentially happening where the application or the network learns on its own to learn to classify that this is a vehicle this is not a vehicle this is not a navigatable path okay now um in in a lot of applications say in terms of classification of a highway scene or you know in a few cases you might have a video which has some fog or rain you might need to remove it or you know a lot of times you have the human aware navigation for robots where we need to ensure that the robots essentially are aware where the humans are and don't collide with each other so you need to say what where the humans are and things like that okay so i want to talk about traditional machine learning and then what is deep learning can someone tell me what do you mean by machine learning anyone to train the machine for to train the machine okay for doing a specific task to perform a specific task okay anything else to build the ability uh, to machine to take the decisions okay to make the decisions okay let me ask you this uh, i'm assuming a lot of you uh, either as kids or or now who may have kids uh, do end up uh, teaching your kid different shapes and all that yeah so let's say we want the kid to be able to identify triangle square or you know a square circle and all that stuff yeah so for him to identify for him or her to identify the shape what would you first uh, tell them would you ask them to look at the number of sides yeah and if it has three sides it's a triangle if it has four sides it's a rectangle or a square or a rhombus or a parallelogram so a circle means infinite number of sides or it's round pentagon but now when it is a square when it is four sides how does it know to classify a square or rectangle you will say take an additional feature which is length of the sides or the angle yeah so see if it's a rhombus and things like that so those are known as features and these are handcrafted we specify we tell the kid to uh, you know that look at the number of sides then look at the length of the side look at the angle between the sides we tell that the feature extraction mechanism is something that's uh, that that the kid does the way we tell it to do yeah these are handcrafted features after that it performs the classification where there is machine learning okay so that is traditional machine learning where the features are handcrafted and it sort we tell the person on what the features that need to be extracted are in deep learning it performs end to end learning by learning the features representation and the tasks directly there is no handcraftedness over there it will essentially dwell into what are the what are different layers which you know are uh, taken different features or which represent different features and learns automatically okay and then it is able to identify what it is okay so we do not give it what features it should be looking at does that make sense yeah so essentially the kid if it's not told what the shapes are and all that stuff and it looks at it on its own and assumes that hey it has four sides now i know this so if it's able to learn on its, on its own that's deep learning everyone clear with this workflow mm. or this understanding okay great mm -hmm. so the end to end learning and the feature and learning and classification are all performed within the network itself we do not help it with the feature extraction mm -hmm. now why deep learning why did it gain so much prominence in the recent past so in the beginning of this decade what happened was machine learning had almost an error of say 30% or 25% yeah but then in the last few years deep learning algorithms which got uh, reintroduced thanks to neural networks or new neural networks which got reintroduced thanks to deep learning has surpassed the human accuracy human accuracy is around 7.5% in terms of classification they have surpassed the human accuracy but how did that happen yeah and this is essentially for there were a few image uh, there's a database of images called imagenet and we were looking at what the top 5 errors over there are so what are the deep learning enablers so a lot of computers have come with gpu nvidia graphic processing units or different graphic processing units so essentially there's been like almost 60 times faster training in almost less than 3 years okay and 
you have labeled public data sets say like you you all know of captcha that is like say if what you need to enter to be able to validate a trans uh, you know to be able to validate a transaction the captcha is a labeled public data set because you are entering and it will try to see what the value over there is or what the text over there is mm -hmm. and then there are different types of world class models which already have pre trained say google net or alex net already has a set of images that are pre trained okay and mm -hmm. you you have around say 20000 images which are already labeled uh, you know around 200 categories and things like that or or there are models which are there and these have served as a starting point for deep learning okay and um typically what we like to see is where does deep learning fit into the engineering curriculum because it's an advanced concept so perhaps you know you look at uh, undergraduate courses in image processing or computer vision or on neural networks or you know a course on adaptive signal processing or methods for autonomous design please do reach out to me if you want to work on any of these we are more than happy to support you on that now what i want to do is just uh, uh, just show you five lines of code okay for deep learning okay so i'm going to go back to uh, my matlab and i'm going to open okay. okay now what i'd like to show you is essentially five lines so i'm i'm going to sort of have this on the side here and perform the same actions just so that you're able to uh, see what i'm doing okay so let me um minimize this let me also minimize this and let me minimize this as well okay okay so the first step i'm going to be doing is net equals alex net okay so what i'm doing is i have a pre trained model okay and matlab is able to access it for me uh internally from an add-on explorer i'll show you how to do that i can say net equals alex net and when i run it it essentially of course it says it's busy because it's trying to load it what do i have here net equals it's it has layers it's a 25 by 1 neural network with a convolution neural network we'll come to that okay next what i'm going to do is i'm going to read as a, an image which is already there in matlab which is peppers and i'll store it in what is known as an image one or something okay so when i say i am show of image one it essentially is capsicum okay it, it is capsicum which is known as peppers in other parts of the world okay now all i need to do is I need to resize the image such that it fits into the Alex Nets uh, framework. So I'll say image one re resized equals I am resize of I image one comma. I'll just put in the okay, and then all I need to do is one line of code to say what it is. So label equals classify take the network that i have defined in alexnet and take the image that is resized okay and it performs a classification and what did i get the classification as bell pepper okay which is essentially what it is and then i can um, this is essentially what it is and it gives me the right Im uh, the right example or the right answer for this particular example yeah so how many lines of code did i write can someone summarize what i have done in these five lines of code what is the first step the, uh, net. neural network choose the pre-trained model and then what am i doing here Read the images. reading the image and then displaying it and then resizing it the yeah. only line of code is what i'm writing is classify is that correct yes yeah okay so essentially what i used here was what is known as alexnet you have multiple other networks and the way i can get that in matlab is go in to the home and i have something known as add-ons and i can say get add-ons 
while that opens up, I will tell you. So these add-ons are something that both MathWorks develops and third-party developers and user-contributed people develop. Like it's like file exchange, but it is within MATLAB. And I can go and say Alex Neck. Okay. And if you notice over here, it says Neural Networks Toolbox Model for AlexNet. Yeah. And it's a MathWorks feature. It contains pre-trained thing, and in my case, it is installed. I can also end up saying Google Net if I want. Yeah. And Google Net, of course, there's something that I have here, Neural Networks Toolbox for the Google Net. I don't have it installed. All I need to do is go here and then say install, and it will end up installing it. And it says it's functional for R2017 B and beyond. OK. Um, now, so you're also able to import models from other frameworks. So if you notice, was it just one line of code that I mentioned? And that will be the same thing even for, say, Google Net or many other uh, things. And if I want to import the models, I can just say import Keras layer or import the TensorFlow Keras model layer, Keras network, any of those. And you're able to download from within MATLAB. Yeah. Um, deep learning, as I mentioned, uses a neural network architecture. There's an input layer, hidden layers, and output layer. In the previous talk, in the previous uh, 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 topic when we talked about the hidden layers was one. In this case, it's n number of hidden layers. Okay. So I'll go over what this convolutional neural network does is, but the problem, the, the only the problem statement essentially is the input, and we need to get the output. We have the feature learning, and then we have the classification that is being done. Who learns a feature? The network learns a feature. Who performs a classification? That's also done, and it's completely automated. Okay. So, any questions so far? So it is like that we should have a, a network full of pre-trained uh, yes. images. Then only we will be able to do it. Yes. Uh, or you can create your own uh, pre-trained images also. We will be talking about that too. Or you can, uh, you know, like use the pre-trained thing, but then add your own layers as well. We will come to that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now what I want to show you is, uh, you know, a new feature in MATLAB, which uh, is known as the live editor or the live script. So what I'd like you to see is this. So if you notice here, I have the same thing. If you notice, I have the same text that I had before, but here I have what is known as the code and then I have the classification and I, of course, it says there's some error here and blah, we'll, we'll see why that is. But is this scene in a nice way in terms of like almost like a textbook yeah where you are able to show a little bit of text you are able to put in matlab code you will also be able to see the output i'll show you another example of that live script it's called as a live script okay so let me run this for you so i will run all i'm hoping it runs without uh, showing any errors it's performing the running here it's doing the network um, loading and then it's performing the classification and it's already classified it so if you notice all of the outputs so let me say i remove this yeah let me run it all of my output plot everything comes in the same window and it's almost like a very nice notebook yeah mm -hmm. it's like one notebook where i have the network properties I say what the image thing is and then what the image looks like. And then I resize it and then tell me what the variable name is. And then I can also export it to a PDF or a HTML or a LaTeX file. So you save a lot of time in rewriting mm -hmm. or copy pasting into say Word or LaTeX or something like that, because it's already in the form of a nice rich text editor. Yeah. And mm -hmm. this is something that was introduced in R 2016. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is, Extension is dot MLX. Okay. Any questions on this? Uh, what uh, the live script does? How can we go to that live script? How can you go to that live script? Let me just show you an example. So you can, uh, you can here in 17B, it says new script or new live script. You can click on that. And then I will, I will have, I will say it's a text. I mm -hmm. want to put a heading. I will say NI triple TR training. Okay, and then I'll put some uh, I'll put some heading saying example one. Okay. 
and then I'll say plot a sine wave. Mm. Okay. Then I will say it is not text, but now it will go into code. I will click on code. Mm. Okay. And I will say t equals mm. um, minus pi mm. to pi. And I'll say plot mm. sign of t. Okay. And now when I run this particular section, mm. I got t. Yes. Is that nice? Yeah. yeah. And what I can do is I can go here and say x label equals. I can put it in here. Mm. Yeah. And uh, as soon as I run that section, it will end up getting updated right away. Mm. Okay. And I can also say perform annotations or move it around or zoom it and it will get reflected here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, what I can do is I'll say I want a text and I want it to be an example. So I'll say example two. Okay. And mm -hmm. I'll say I want to perform mm -hmm. trigonometric okay. examples. I can say that. And then I'll go to code. Mm -hmm. I'll say sims of x mm -hmm. and I'll say y equals sign of mm. um maybe let's say x um <coughs> let's say x square plus log of x mm. okay. and then i'll say what is diff of y that is differential and i'll say what is int of y and mm. i'll say f plot of what i'll put it in a thing saying plot diff of y and int of Five. Okay. So far, is it easy? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, let me run this particular section. Mm -hmm. And if you notice, it's of course it will take uh, a little bit of time. So I got uh, my um, value, mm -hmm. which is uh, say sine x square plus log x, mm -hmm. and the differential is this correct? Two x cos x square plus this one, and yes. then the integral. Yeah. And it's still evaluating what the uh, uh, how it should be plotting because it's a more complex expression because it's a Fresnel function. Mm -hmm. So you will end up getting a plot in some time or it might end up showing an error. But mm -hmm. is this a nice way for the students to learn and you know you're able to see everything in line itself, yes. right? So, very good. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. so this is what is known as the live editor, which is what I wanted to show you in terms of deep learning in terms of five lines of code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you notice here, how does this plot look like? Is it very nice? Yes. So this blue one essentially shows my input. Mm. Y. This yes. one here is my uh, derivative. The Sorry, the yellow one is my derivative. And mm. the orange one is my integral. I can put in legend if I want. And I can say, um, you know, I can say um, y. Mm. I put in um, diff of y. Mm. And then I can put in. I, I will be your Okay. And uh, then let me just run. Mm. And I'll just run that. I'll just run that. And, yeah. What's that? Yes. Any questions? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. It's clear. Okay. It will take a little while. Okay. Sure. We'll, we'll wait for that to do it, but we'll go back to another example. Um, what I would like to show you next is how do you do it for multiple images? Okay, so let's let's take a look at that. So I'm going to take a look at um, an example, which uh, you will see in just a little bit. Okay, it's the it's not opening for me because okay, sure. Mm, let me just add to path. Is it still hanging? It's it's still taking a little while. Um, but you know what I want to, what I wanted to show you. Okay, it 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 did that. So you see here, I'm able to get the um, different um, things here. Yeah, the differential and the integral component. Yeah. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to uh, take into account what happens when there's a pre-trained network. I'm going to explore expose it a little more. Okay. So. This may not work uh, because I see an error, but what I want to show you is the overall workflow. Okay, so I'm clearing, and what is the first step I'm doing here? Can someone tell me? Net equals AlexNet, what does it do? Load the net. Load the network. And then next component, I'm inspecting the network. I will see what the network layers are. 
okay and then i'll also see what the last part is what is there in terms of classes okay i have a thousand by one cell array so it essentially has thousand different classification okay that is my output layer then what am i going to perform i'm not going to take one, just one image what do i have here take one particular folder so here if you go here in matlab i have a folder with a lot of images around 12 images over here okay and i don't want to keep uh, doing a lot doing it over and over again or write a different for loop and all that there's a smarter way of doing it okay mm -hmm. so what i'll do is i will essentially end up taking this image what is the path of the image okay and i will show what the image is yeah but i won't do this just once what I'll do is I will run this in a loop using what is known as data store. It's like a pointer, okay? It will essentially take into account all the files that are there in this particular folder, okay? And this will be the pointer. And whatever I get here, whatever I say image data stores, that is image paths, it will essentially store it like a pointer. It won't load all the data into the workspace, but it will end up saying, I have IDs, I have three images plus nine more. So a total of 12 images, but I'm, I'm, I'm only having it as a pointer. Is that okay? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm displaying that. Next, what I'll do is while I'm doing that, while I ensure that I end up getting all the images, I'm performing the same thing. I read the image, sorry, I read the data. Okay, mm -hmm. and I resize it mm -hmm. and then I classify the image, mm -hmm. okay? But I'm, I'm, I'm running it over 1,000 samples, yeah? And you know, what is the max score that I get? And show me what it is, okay? So is this a seashore here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yes. what about this? This is a breakwater, this is okay. But then, is this a hot dog? <laughs> no, so you're getting a value that's 0 0.11, so it needs to be trained better. Is this a bakery? No. It's a part of a bakery, but it should have been cupcakes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Is this a sheep? No, it's a, cat. It's, a, it's a cat. Is this a lakeside? Maybe, but a frozen lakeside, but it took the sunset into account. Mm -hmm. And then is this a bucket? No, of course, there's a kid inside a bucket. It forgot the kid, but it showed it, it did the bucket. Mm -hmm. Is this a couch? Of course it is. Then is this a cardigan? Perhaps not. Mm -hmm. And then is this a Japanese spaniel? So paddle? No, this is a fire extinguisher. Sandbar? No, it's beach sand. Yeah. And you can perform the same thing by, you know, reading uh, something from, um, let me try to run this section. Uh, you, you can read any image and then you're able to classify it and you can do that uh, for a web image as well. Is it very easy? Like, what is the only key thing that we changed here? We ended up, mm -hmm. we ended up storing the whole data path in what is known as IDS. We provided it with a pointer and we were able to show what uh, the overall thing is for all the images in that folder. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, an extension of what you did in this case. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to um, the slides. So pre-trained networks have a predetermined layer order, which makes them effective for classifying images. They're typically trained to classify a lot of images, different networks. So say Google net will be different. They are a great starting point, but not consistently accurate. Okay. We will discuss what transfer learning is tomorrow. If there's a way mm -hmm. you can add more layers to it and things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I want to say is deep learning is definitely not complicated. It can be very easy. Okay. If you notice it's, Simple, the only thing is you need to understand the concept of neural networks pretty well. Um, I would actually uh, want to take a little bit of time in explaining the background of a convolution neural network, which is there. So if you notice, I have an input. What is this layer here? Feature, feature learning and then the classification. I want to spend a little time on feature layer. So assume that you want to uh, detect numerals. Okay, so the convolution neural network has three components. What's the first layer here? Convolution layer. The second layer is the max pooling layer. Third layer is called the ReLU layer. Okay, I'll tell you what each of these layers are and stop for questions and we can continue tomorrow. So the convolution layer, what it does is it takes the input and searches for multiple patterns. 
okay in this case it's a 3 by 3 matrix how many patterns can we have we can have 27 patterns is that correct this pattern here is there in this yeah this straight pattern can be there in this here or this one is there here so what it does is it takes each of these patterns and slides it through the image and performs correlation okay and sees which patterns give the most score so it performs correlation and tries to see what the patterns that give the most score are and chooses that particular pattern okay so any questions so far okay these are of, of course binary images the next part is all the patterns are compared to the patterns on a new image okay it starts at a left corner slide over one by one pixel and repeat for the next pattern it's a greedy search algorithm next a good pattern matching what would happen is so this one will only end up doing good against this pattern it won't do well against the other pattern so we'll see what the best pattern is okay so what we try what we are going to get here is in this case will we end up getting a score for all of these patterns is that right yeah but it will occur in various parts of the image you may end up getting a matrix like this you understand you will end up getting a matrix like this which takes what the score is and you say in this case, this was the pattern that was the best. So let me have four. Mm -hmm. This pattern was the best. Let me have eight. In this case, again, five and then six. This is like down sampling. We shrink the large images while performing them, but preserving the important information. That is the second layer, which is called the max pooling. The third thing, the rectified linear unit layer is if you have a negative value in your image, they are all set to zero. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're all set to zero and which is where we have the three components so i just want to go back to the same thing so what do we have here the convolution layer performs pattern search over multiple different types of patterns and you have the relu which is essentially sets the con sets the uh, correlation value to zero what does pooling do it will essentially perform down sampling yeah and that is repeated over multiple things and then once you get that value it is flattened out okay mm -hmm. and then there's one thing ca called the fully connected thing and then we perform the softmax each of these details will be sent to you shortly and these are mathematical operations we essentially try to instead of a vector we try to ensure that it's a flattened layer and then we ensure that this connection between the image pixels and then you end up seeing what is the best correlation that's over there is that clear mm -hmm. yeah so this is what you might have seen in your matlab command window here so in the first case what was the first layer <coughs> what was the first layer here image input the second layer convolution relu max pooling again convolution relu max pooling convolution relu convolution relu multiple times and then finally what is the last layer classification, classification output yeah so is that in sync with what you saw as um not here sorry what you saw as the different layers. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So, okay. So this is where your neural network background will come of help in deep learning. It's more the number of hidden layers, better the classification, and which is why deep learning has become a bigger phenomena. And why has that become? Because earlier you were, uh, neural networks were very computationally intensive, but at this point of time, they are not. And we are able to, uh, you know, use GPUs in order to do that. Okay. So what I would like to touch upon 30 minutes tomorrow is what are the best cases where you can do um, this form of an approach or in a few cases where you might need to introduce additional layers and perform the lay learning. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that we will be talking about. So just to summarize, what I want to show you is um, of course, you have the flatten layer, which flattens the neurons in a previous layer, and then fully connected, which it says which are the high level layers, and softmax, it's done the scores into probabilities. What I want to take tomorrow is when do you end up, uh, sorry, when do you end up doing two different approaches? We will talk about it tomorrow, but for today, the workflow is you perform the pre processing, define the layers in CNN set the training options train the networks and test and deploy the train network same as a neural network workflow access the images define the hidden layer define the weights define of a few other things train the network and then va uh, validate it and then classify it is that correct 
and then repeat these orange steps till it reaches the desired level of accuracy. Is that clear? Clear? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to be stopping today at this point, if that's okay. And I'm happy to take a, a few questions. I know I was told that I have time until four. So I wanted to spend around five minutes on questions. And then what I would like you to do as a homework and come tomorrow, if possible. Yes. Yeah. OK. Um, while I'm checking what I should give you as a homework, if you can uh, ask me any questions, that would be very helpful. Uh, while, yeah, while you think of questions, what I wanted to talk to you about is, Please Google what is known as Deep Learning MATLAB on RAM. It's a free two hour training, online training. Anyone can access. Okay. What it will end up showing you is what the convolutional neural networks are. How do you pre process image? How do you use pre trained networks? You don't need MATLAB installed on your computer. You can essentially end up uh, like, uh, you know, uh, doing it in your own uh, computer with where there's no MATLAB installed. And you can say, you know, launch the course and I'll just show you what the course looks like. Okay, so let me um, let me try to log into mine. It's called the deep learning on ramp and MATLAB. Okay. Uh, when you finish this course, of course, you get a certificate. I'm also happy to issue certificates from MathWorks for people who've attended this if needed. Uh, in addition to this, what, what I can do is I can say, um, Click on, uh, you know, I'll just essentially take the first example. Uh, first example that's there here. It, it shows a green bar because I've completed it. it. It runs a little bit of video that's there. And then I can say next. And then again, the course overview, it gives me a next. Now, it shows me an example on how to identify a few objects in some images. So as it is by clearing those two, I've completed 5% of the course. Now, it says, you will be performing this. This is the same example that you performed. Okay. Now, what you can do is it will say use the IM read function to, uh, you know, read the uh, file name. So all I need to go and do over here is I equals IM read, and I can say, um, you know, I, I can I can use um, what I what do I have as the file name? I will say file o one dot jpg. And what do I need to store it into? I need to store it in a variable called Hi. image one. Yeah. And I can say submit. And once I've submitted it, it's going to run it and it says it is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, it will take me to the next task. What was my next task? I need to view the image. Yeah. So all I need to do is I am show of IMG one. Yeah. And I'll submit. It will run it again and it saw it and it is correct. Okay. Then I go to the next task. So will you be able to do things section one and two before tomorrow? It's very easy, but it would be great if you can do section one and two in the deep learning on ramp before tomorrow. It would be very nice. And I'd like to show you how the certificate will look like. Um, let's see um, if I'm able to. So I can say download the progress report. I actually will end up getting a nice PDF which says, you know, I've completed it 5%. I've done introduction 100%, but I've not completed the others. It's it's good for you to show that you get a certificate like this. <laughs> okay. So I'm also happy to give you a certificate for, uh, indicating the fact that you've attended uh, today's session and uh, tomorrow's session, but this is something that's generated automatically for you mm -hmm. also. Okay. Mm -hmm. So will you be able to do the uh, two tasks, two chapters that is introduction and using pre-trained networks before tomorrow? Yes. It would be, it would be helpful. So mm -hmm. go to MATLAB on ramp, uh, which just say Google um, MATLAB deep, deep learning, on deep ramp. learning on ramp. You just need to create a MathWorks account and you can click on that and it will help you launch. It's a free course. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, in, okay. I, sp I took more time than, uh, uh, than I promised. I, I said I would give you some time for questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions at this point of time or anything that you would like me to cover tomorrow?